Okay, so pleasure to be here. My name is Alex. Uh, I recently joined Secret Labs as the new CEO. And my talk today is privacy ecosystems at play, right, which is pretty generic. Uh, so I'll try to cover some ground, which some of you will probably know. So it will be just a lot of it you probably know, but it will be just a you know, refresher. And then we'll talk about what we are building uh, in terms of privacy ecosystems. Okay, so I want to start, you know, with the first principles, right? And what what the guys here were talking about, uh, this whole movement and all of the blockchain started back, you know, the idea started much earlier than the actual technology. So we're talking about the Cypherpunks manifesto from the 90s, I think. And uh, one thing it says is privacy is the power to selectively reveal oneself to the world, right? And then if we move forward to the Bitcoin white paper, right? So chapter 10 talks specifically about privacy, right? And that turned out to be a big mistake, as we all know, right? Because Satoshi's idea was that anonymity, like they kind of mixed anonymity and pseudonymity, and what they thought was anonymous actually turned out to be pseudonymous. And uh, we know what's going on today, right? So blockchain is essentially an open book with all those analytics companies digging the data, de-anonymizing people. I don't know if you guys heard about this company called Arcom Intelligence. Have you? It's, it's a, yeah, it's a very funny project. I mean, what they're doing is they're paying people money for doxing uh, um, blockchain addresses. So if you know on, know the blockchain address of a, of a famous person, you can just you can get some money from those guys. So they're trying to build this list of, of, of known addresses. And you know, chain analysis has been around for a very long time. Elliptic, Quantum, CypherTrace, TRM Labs, you name it, and they have become like de facto kind of a police. Uh, of this blockchain world where they decide who is good and who is bad and who is connected and who is not connected and, and they set the risk scores. Um, and on top of that we have uh, guys who are probably less controversial but doing a lot of research um, and uh, you know Nansen, it's, it's a great company, one of the services is uh, it allows you to follow trades of high profile successful traders. Right, so it's good for, for people, probably not so good for traders who want to keep their strategies uh, common, right? And of course, all the MEV uh, thing, which is huge, um, over 60, 60 to 70% uh, of all the trades on Ethereum DEXs in volume are coming from MEV bots. I don't know if you knew that, but that's, that's the reality, right? And uh, Flashbots is one of the pieces of infrastructure that actually allows that. Now they're moving to this new Suave uh, infrastructure, which would keep the mempool private, but probably private from other people, but not private from, uh, from Flashbots themselves. Um, anyway, blockchain is an open book, and you know this whole, uh, whole discussion, whole uh, event here is about how, how this is solved. Um, I'm just coming here from uh, uh, Cosmoverse, which is the Cosmos ecosystem event that was held in Istanbul. And I got a lot of questions there, like mixing up different things. And I think it's important that we set those two things separately. There is transactional privacy, right? Meaning uh, when people send money to each other, uh, we want to hide who is sending how much to what. And in addition to that, and separately from that is computational privacy, right? The smart contracts that are running on lots of different blockchains, uh, it is very desirable, desirable to be able to hide the inputs and the outputs, right? And only putting those things together actually reaches the desired results of, of privacy. Okay, so uh, we can talk a little bit about the solutions, right, which you all no, um, I used to be uh, 
I used to be the CEO of Beam, um, and Beam is one of uh, one of those layer one privacy uh, privacy coins, privacy blockchain. These are all transactional privacy solutions, right? We all know Monero, Zcash, Beam, uh, Tornado Cash. Well, we all know the story, right? And there's a new one uh, called Namada Interchain Privacy. All of those guys do transactional privacy solutions. Uh, back in 2018, everybody was talking about transactional privacy as the next big thing in the blockchain. It didn't actually happen, right? Uh, Monero is more or less where it was. It's still it's the biggest privacy coin protocol. Uh, seems like just transactional privacy is just not enough. Right, it's not enough on its own because most people don't care uh, that much about it. And when I start, if I care about the transaction, I want to send something to somebody else, and I need to move them to another blockchain, it's very hard. So this this didn't happen uh, that much. So for computational privacy, uh, there are different technologies available right now in the market, right? So when we put uh, we put it through in three axes. So this is the uh, development difficulty, the computational cost, and the privacy guarantee. Okay, so on Ethereum, we, we just put like the EVM technology here with like almost zero privacy. And then uh, here, uh, somewhere in the middle, is the TE, which is actually the technology of uh, the secret network is using, which is trusted execution environment there, where everything is running inside an encrypted enclave. Um, and it's it's pretty it's pretty good, right? It gives it's it's relatively easy to develop, not very high computational costs, and, and very good privacy guarantees. There are other technologies, right? MPC blockchains like Partitia, maybe you guys know some more. Uh, ZKT projects like Aleo, Aztec, and many more who are doing this using ZKT, which is very uh, it's supposed to be much more difficult to develop. And then there's FHE, which it has supposedly higher uh, privacy guarantees, but it's still uh, out there uh, to be really developed and deployed, right? Uh, so there is like this whole zoo of three-letter acronyms, and the question is uh, whether there is one ring that will rule them all. Um, okay, and my answer is no. No, so uh, there are different trade-offs for, for different applications, sorry, right? So if you think uh, about securing a simple rock, paper, scissors game for uh, one cent versus securing your institutional private keys or building a billion dollar dark pools, then the privacy trade-offs would be different. The cost, the computation time required. So we believe that the future is multi multi technology, right? And, and there are and there are more applications which we are you know on the lookout for and which we are encouraging community to build on. And that's why we're participating in in hackathons and you know trying to find more and more use cases. But it's very clear that the trade-offs are different and different uh, privacy technologies will be needed. Okay, uh, some more words about Secret Network. It's one of the oldest confidential blockchains with computational privacy. The layer one in Cosmos running on Intel SGX. Development is done in Rust. Some statistics. Um, over 300,000 wallets. Uh, we have all kinds of applications running on the blockchain, starting from DeFi to private NFTs to sealed bid auction to some gaming, and we, we are looking for more. And we have recently announced, and this ties up to this trade-off uh, idea, we've recently announced that we're starting what we call the Confidential Computing Constellation uh, with the idea of exporting privacy to other ecosystems, right? So uh, it, it's clear that it's pretty hard to move developers, move builders from one ecosystem to the other. People who are building on EVM or Solana are, are used to it and they, and they love that system and they don't want to move to a, not necessarily want to move to a 100% privacy blockchain. So what they actually need is uh, 
certain is a way to use certain private functions, private methods in some parts of their app. And this is what we are actually starting out to build. Uh, so we will be developing those privacy SDKs for different blockchains that will communicate with secret network and other networks in the constellation to receive those privacy solutions. So our latest network upgrade actually allows for this line over here, so Axlar GMP, Axlar General Message Passing. So we will be soon rolling out endpoints that will allow basic things like storing encrypted values, uh, getting uh, random values from secret, uh, basic set operations, and then we'll be building out more uh, high-level building blocks like you know, voting, uh, sealed deed auctions, and more uh, as we discover more need. So, and this actually, uh, this constellation is started by Secret and also a sister project called Phoenix, which is developing uh, the FHE encryption. And uh, here we already see that different trade-offs will be available. So this, this SDK over here will let people choose actually how much they want to pay and how long they want to wait to get uh, their privacy thing done and, and to actually choose which kind of technology they, they want to use. And we will be seeking out and calling out for uh, projects to join this constellation. Right. In addition to that, we will be having uh, app chains that will be running on this constellation and using privacy solutions natively right on, on Secret or others. Okay, so, you know, summing up, um, we, what we want to build is actually a full-fledged privacy ecosystem with transactional computational privacy, supporting different trade-offs, interoperability, um, asset bridging, uh, most of those pieces are already present in our constellation. The last thing I put on here is compliance support. It's also important, I think, this ethos or this idea of having a fully private, fully cypherpunk thing that nobody can, you know, learn anything about or that doesn't, it doesn't play well with compliance at all. It, doesn't work out well, so uh, today many blockchains already have things like viewing keys, which Secret Network already allows for. Uh, so we believe this is also an important piece uh, of a healthy privacy ecosystem. Right? Uh, so benefits of joining the constellation for a project are here. So it's a shared gateway to other ecosystem. Shared security, uh, so say new app chains would be able to just use secret networks validators to secure uh, their network. Economic ties between the networks through tokenomics uh, exchanges or through paying gas in one token or uh, rewarding validators. Uh, existing users, existing tooling, and the constellation is, as I mentioned, suitable for L1 and L2 uh, chains in the future. And uh, to end, we believe that privacy is one of the key catalyzers of the next bull run, right? Along with the user experience, uh, along with account abstraction, uh, I think uh, today's great DeFi and other products, they hit a certain glass ceiling in terms of adoption just because they're not private and big players cannot really live with all their uh, trades, strategies, and other things that they do that it all is an open book and everybody can view and copy. That's it. Thank you very much. Please join our Twitter, X, and uh, Telegram. And if there are any questions, happy to answer.